Meet the Chicago Historians will return right after these messages. Well, ladies and gentlemen, today is Monday, February the 20th. And in about 29 days from now, it will be the first day of spring. And guess what will happen come springtime? Yep, we'll get into all kinds of rainy weather and all kinds of uh, moisture. And therefore, you want to make sure that the roof on your house is in real good shape. And you can do that by calling Best Brothers Roofing at area code 630-616-1359. Mike Besh will come out in a shiny, beautiful red pickup truck with ladders on, on the top and the big signs on the doors, Best Brothers Roofing. He'll come out, take a good look at your vehicle and make sh at, at your roof and make sure that uh, you have a real good roof that you won't have that drip, 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 drip in your front room, dining room, kitchen, bedroom, bathroom, or wherever. So once again, 29 days from now will be the first of spring, and we want to make sure that your roof is in real good shape. Because you know what will happen? If your roof leaks, that means the ceiling in your room will, will get wet and possibly will collapse. And you don't want double expense. So therefore, call Besh Brothers Roofing, Mike Besh, at area code 630-616-1359. Again, Besh Brothers Roofing, Mike Besh, 630-616-1359. And now, let's get back to Meet the Chicago Historians. And Jack Ryan, it's all yours. Well, that was mighty quick. We're back. We're having a great time. And I can see this is going to be, we probably won't get to our <laughs> our <laughs> subject, which is great because we're doing well. We can use that nostalgic stuff maybe next time or something. Yeah, you know? It was more preparation. But one thing about uh, uh, Abe and Mary, or Mary and Abe, they, they sure were a Mutt and Jeff team, weren't they? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. They were very mismatched. Yeah. yeah. A mutt he was and very Jeff, short. Like, he was very right, tall. Yeah, tall, yeah, tall and short. A little bit like yeah. Lincoln yeah. and Douglas, you know, the yeah, long right. and the yeah. short of it, yeah. Even, even <laughs> you know the personalities what? were so different. The personalities yeah. were so different. Hey, Bob, she probably voted for Douglas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, uh, Douglas, of course, had been her suitor before she before oh, yeah. she yeah. had That's right, yeah. Because they knew each other, of course. They had served in the legislature together. Their careers paralleled each other yeah. throughout. Oh. Didn't he, didn't he uh, support Lincoln quite a bit, though, when the war came along? Oh, yes, yeah. very much And so. yeah. the famous yeah. story, you know, he held Lincoln's hat on the inaugural stand. Yes. Lincoln, Douglas is up there. You can see him. He actually held Lincoln's hat while Lincoln, I mean, to think he was the defeated candidate. I'm not going to go there. But <laughs> he, held, he held his hat while he, while he delivered his inaugural address. And the interesting thing is that there was actually a movement on the part of some of the Republican leadership to draft Douglas as their candidate. They mm -hmm. wanted Douglas because he'd had some differences with Buchanan, mm -hmm. differences with the Democrats uh, over the, the run-up to the Civil War. And Lincoln was the one who scotched that. He, he was determined that he was going to be the leader of the Republican yeah. uh -huh. Party in the West. And he was not going to have Steve Douglas, who had been this lifelong Democrat, Suddenly, now, when, when they, the Republicans oh, yeah. had the opportunity to, with, within their grasp of winning the White House to let Douglas come over and declare himself a Republican and win the Republican nomination. Uh, uh, John, mm -hmm. uh, when you say the West, we don't mean the far West. We mean no, the what? but, but, but in, Lincoln, Lincoln's in Lincoln's day, uh, Illinois was, was the, the West. Was I mean, the West. Yeah. West of Ohio or something like that? Well, was, if, you th if you think of the Northeast <laughs> as the North, if you think of New England, New York, Pennsylvania, and you think yeah, of the yeah, South, yeah. the slave states, the, what they call the Old Northwest, Ohio, uh, Indiana, Iowa, Illinois, yeah, yeah. we were the, the, Iowa. This was the West. I mean, Lincoln was considered a Westerner, and, and they they yeah. think obviously not the Rocky Mountain West. No, no, but, but this no, is no, why no. I often say when you know when I, I do Lincoln's voice, you know he, he had to, he had, supposedly had this kind of a high pitched, kind of a squeaky voice, which they describe as oh, yeah. having kind of a Western twang to it, because right. <laughs> we think of it as the Midwest, but for for folks back in the 1850s, this was the West. This was no. this was America's. Well, was the this Northwest. was frontier country. Oh, the Northwest yeah. Territory, which uh, George Rogers Clark basically won us sure. in the yes. revolution, was yeah. Wisconsin, Illinois, Indiana, and Michigan, right? Ohio, Ohio, the Ohio, Ohio Indiana, yeah. Illinois. All those Big Ten schools. 
That's right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Northwestern, by the way, yeah. right? Yeah. He signed them all up too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's interesting. I was just, I was just reading about, about uh, you know uh, the uh, the run up to the to the convention. You know, Seward, William Seward, who becomes the Secretary of State, mm -hmm. was probably the odds-on favorite right. within the Republican Party to be mm -hmm. the nominee. But he decides to go on an extended tour of Europe in the months before the Republican convention. And he's out of the country. He wanted to kind of develop prestige that he understood foreign affairs and so forth. And, and as a result, they felt Seward may have lost the nomination because while he was, was meeting with kings and princes overseas, all these other candidates were, were doing what needed to be done to mend their political fences back home. And, and I think Lincoln's home. people packed the wigwam. The wigwam, yeah. Yeah. that's yeah. right. Yeah. It, having yeah. it here in Chicago was definitely a benefit. Yeah. How? In fact, the wigwam, how? How? <laughs> are, are you suggesting that maybe Chicago has a special knack at politics? No, <laughs> not no. at all. No. Well, did you see, no, was no, it no. last week, uh, <laughs> we were voted the most corrupt? And, Yes. yes. Like yeah. we didn't know that already. Yeah. <laughs> I think it was the, state, the whole state of Illinois. Was the most and we're proud of it. Yeah. Yeah. Some, yeah. Someone, uh, the someone, city in the state. There we go. Yeah. Someone <laughs> sent an email to Don Wade and Roma says, actually, Chicago was number two, but they rigged the election. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's a great, there's a great line in one of, one of the Lincoln films where, you know, his first election to the legislature, and they're announcing the results, mm -hmm. and one of Lincoln's friends says, yeah, in, in my district, the vote was 212 to 3, and I got some boys out looking for the three that <laughs> voted wrong. <laughs> Gee. My claim to fame in Chicago is uh, originally from Minnesota. My families I think we're very brave to live in Chicago. Chicago? So that's oh, my type, yeah. a very brave woman. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sure. So. <laughs> my mother went to visit. We, they had cousins, that, only cousins in the New World because my grandmother my maternal grandmother and grandfather and her sister and her husband came from Austria before the First World War here. They settled out in Michigan farm country in Gladwin and Gaylord and you know, they came here. Well, anyway, they, my, my mother went to visit there. The cousins wouldn't believe that she never saw anyone gunned down. You know? Oh, <laughs> so, yeah. To this I've day, they... I've gun, she said. Yeah, it's yeah. a common thing. You think you travel, like if you go to Europe and you say you're from, I don't say I'm oh, from someone, I say Chicago, they say, oh, bang, 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 Al Capone. Oh, yeah, right yeah. away. <laughs> yeah. The minute you yeah. say Chicago, is that a... Amazing. For a while it was Michael yet. Jordan, but yes. yeah. 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 the gangster. Yeah. Yeah. You'll never you know. Yeah. You know, I was doing some research uh, on a um, uh, fire, and uh, uh, it was in my old neighborhood on uh, Dayton Street, actually. And <clears throat> I don't know if you're, you're talking politics. Two streets that are side by side. What? Dayton and Fremont. Now they're, they're not they're north side streets. Out mm -hmm. south it would be like Green and Peoria. Mm -hmm. uh, they were the first Republican uh, uh, presidential candidates. Fremont, uh, Fremont 56, and 56, yeah. and 56, and Dayton was his. Dayton and Hudson? Dayton and Hudson, yeah. Really? Uh, no, Dayton and <laughs> Fremont and <laughs> no. Dayton. Dayton. Oh, Dayton. Oh, I didn't know Dayton. By the time Lincoln was elected, I think the Republican Party was only seven years old. When yeah, and it was only the second yeah, yeah, sure. uh, second we presidential. Yeah, Whig party. Lincoln's yeah. Lincoln's yeah. politics throughout his career had been a Whig. He had that's been right. a member well, of the Whig right. party. Yeah. Right. Right. He'd he always wear one too. Always, you know, part, did he wear one too? <laughs> no, he never <laughs> wore one. No, un unlike <laughs> unlike some of the founders, he, he didn't wear a wig. <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know, people think of again. It's the misperceptions. People think of of Illinois as Lincoln's home state. He was born in Kentucky. Kentucky. Yeah. He, grew, yeah. he grew up in Indiana. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was 21 years old when he moved to the state of Illinois. Anybody ever seen that? New Salem State Park there. Oh, yeah. oh sure. Oh, that's beautiful. Oh, yeah. sure. That, that is such a trip. I remember uh, my wife, Deanna, she got married. Said, well, let's go to Springfield. I said, there's nothing down there. <laughs> Finally, we went. The kids were both there. What a great thing. You stop at New Salem. Uh, like you said, the tomb is, is, the tomb is there. The guy's actually there. Yeah. 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 The depot where he left is there, you know? Mm -hmm. Sure. A few and weeks uh, back, about, uh, oh, I think maybe the first or second week in January, somebody actually climbed up onto the staircase up on top of Lincoln's tomb, took the sword off of one of the statues. Yeah, stole it. Yeah, they stole the That's sword. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. How sad. Must be a gun control. His body was actually stolen, too, or it was blotted to be stolen. They never, they didn't get away right. with it. They, 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 they yeah. 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 Right, right. That's why now you never even get to it. It's under like 10 tons of concrete. It's buried under. So, right. Yeah, yeah. Right. And I must keep reminding you of the Chicago <laughs> connection. Lincoln uh, was uh, visited Chicago many times, and he wasn't here for the convention, I believe, but in, you know, in 1860. Yeah, he didn't address conventions. Yeah, he didn't address, days. but he came. Uh, after and he went to uh, services over at St. James Cathedral, you know, on uh, yeah. uh, Wabash there, and um, uh, or 18th Street or something. Or no, 18th no, 20th? it's uh, I think it's Huron. Yeah. Oh, there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, there, right. Yeah. And um, 
you know, and that that building is still standing, and it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. a it's a like Episcopal. Uh, he uh, never uh, joined any cathedral. denomination, though. No. He said, no. was, "I'll right. join one as, as soon as they like if their uh, if their rule was the Golden Rule or something. There are too many rules." Yeah. He said that's what he said anyway. Yeah. Presbyterians are proud of the fact that he attended services with his wife, because Mary mm -hmm. was Presbyterian, so he did attend church in, in Presbyterian churches. Church of Scotland, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, you talk about it's, it's interesting on, on the morning of April the fourteenth. Uh, Friday, which was Good Friday, it was it was the the best day he said he had perhaps had since the war began. It was the the war had been over for about five. Well, the surrender of of, of Lee to Grant was about five days past, and Lincoln said that he was the first day that he really felt oh. the burden of the war had been lifted yeah, from. He got up, he had a breakfast, he was joking with everyone in the White House. Mm -hmm. He met with uh, with Schuyler Colfax, who was the Speaker of the House. It's fascinating. Lincoln, you know, you talk about you talk about Nostradamus. He told Schuyler Koufax on that day that he foresaw unlimited possibilities for the United States now that the war was over and the country would be reunited. He said, I see waves of immigrants coming to our shores from Europe, thousands and thousands of people coming from, from, from the teeming throngs of Europe. I see this country growing richer and richer until it will one day become the treasury of the earth. He foresaw the, what, the America of the 20th century. He saw us as the richest nation. He, he called us the treasury of the earth. He might would be the richest nation in the world. And then he took Mary uh, for a carriage ride through Washington. He was talking about, at the end of his second term, what he was going to do. And he talked about going back into the legal profession. And he said he'd open up an office either in Springfield or Chicago. He speculated on the possibility of, of Chicago. That detail. That's so he was he he had four years ahead of him. He had all the plans of what he was going to do to reunite the country now that the war was over. Because Lincoln's you know, Lincoln's great emphasis was he wanted the country reunited. When he went down to uh, to uh, Richmond, when Richmond had fallen, just just really weeks earlier. And he had gone to what they call the Confederate White House, which mm -hmm. had been Jefferson Davis's headquarters. And he sat at, at the desk. A, a Union soldier came up and said, Mr. President, what do you want us to do with these here Southerners? Mm -hmm. And he said, let them up easy, son. Yeah. Let them up easy. His whole emphasis was that he wanted the country reunited. He and wanted then, to of course, treat them as nothing ever happened. Right? Yeah, that was yeah. his yeah. ambition. Was yeah. there's, a, there's a great line. One of my favorite Lincoln lines is from the Battle of Gettysburg. Meade wins the Battle of Gettysburg. Meade is one of the unsung mm -hmm. heroes of the Civil War. He wins the Great Battle of Gettysburg, the pivotal battle, and no one knows Meade's name. People, most people probably assume that Grant was in command, which Grant was out west. Meade wins this victory, but he doesn't follow it up. He mm -hmm. could have probably destroyed Lee's army once and for all, but Lee, Meade had won this great victory, and he was slow in pursuing Lee, and he sends a telegram back to the White House saying, I am driving the enemy from our soil. Because Lee was was going across back, yeah. and Lincoln it was one of the few few instances in which Lincoln lost his temper. You never think of Lincoln losing mm -hmm. his temper. He had such an even disposition, mm -hmm. but he really lost it. He said, "Our soil, it's all our soil. Yeah, yeah. Virginia, <laughs> Texas, yeah. and Alabama are yeah. our soil. Yeah. That's what this war is all about." Doesn't he understand that? <laughs> and the, the whole sad thing of. Lincoln's death was the South lost its best friend. Yeah, oh, yeah. 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 right. Yeah. He intended a mild. Yeah, the reconstruction would have been totally yeah. different, and it might have been the story of our civil rights struggles yeah. might have yeah, been different. Sure would have. Yeah. 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 yeah, When Johnson became president, he completely reversed all of Lincoln's decision and wanted the South punished mm -hmm. and all That's this right. stuff and everything like that. And Johnson and, was and very the, and, the, and the more radical Republicans and yeah. Yeah. pushed Johnson mm -hmm. even further than he would have. Thaddeus Stevens. Because he was a Southerner himself. Johnson had been an indentured servant too. But he hated the upper class. He, he, had, he had been a, a, mm -hmm. a poor fellow from Tennessee. He was a working man. He was a, and, he, was and a he, he hated the land owning, well, land -owning mm -hmm. aristocracy he, of the South. Wasn't he a runaway from one of the Carolinas? He, he, had, he had to be his, 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 the woman who became his wife taught him how to read. Yeah. I mean, he he did was, not uh, know how to read and write. Portrayed Tennessee Johnson. Tennessee the name Johnson. Of the film Van Hepley. On, uh, yeah. Van Hepley. It's, a, it's, it's good. It's done. It's, it's uh, accurate in a lot of ways. They, they do show like he's before a full. A full uh, um, Oh, during the impeachment hearing, but it wasn't full of, like it showed the galleries in, but nonetheless, the, the, the wording in it is really, really good. It's uh, interesting you brought you that up chance. about Lincoln, because that is what I was portraying to you, Bob. Uh, in reading different facts, 
I felt like he was way ahead of his time. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and then now what you said uh, on his last days, he wrote his own epitaph. Yeah, Nostradamus. And then I, yeah. and when I, I, I give talks about Lincoln, I say, and then af after all this, and then he went back to the White House and yeah. changed and went to and the, the theater. theater. I mean, and, you know, and it, every, you think of how different American history mm -hmm. might have been. Another favorite quote of mine from the very first speech that Lincoln, the fir first great speech Lincoln ever gives is to the, the Young Men's Lyceum of Springfield. When he's when he's, he's a state legislator, it's in 1837, I believe he gives this speech, and his topic was the survival of our free institutions. They would tell, I guess, they would tell the speaker what they wanted him to talk about. So he talks about his vision for America, and he says, you know, where will the danger? I'm going to do. This, I'm not going to try to. Where will the danger to our country come from? He says, will some foreign enemy cross the oceans, some transatlantic giant cross the oceans and strike us down at a blow? Never. He says, all the armies of Europe, Asia, and Africa combined, with a Bonaparte in command, and with all the treasure of the earth, except our own, in their chest, could never by force drink from the waters of the Ohio or leave a footprint on the Blue Ridge. Yeah. He says, That's a very little known speech. He says, if yeah. we, and, and it's it just, it just, and remember, this is the America of 1837. This What's is not, security this is not us? our United, What's this is not the United States, that's the, the no. most powerful nation on earth. We weren't even thought of by the powers of the world. We were considered, you know, unimportant. He had, and he's saying, in effect, that America cannot be conquered, that there's no mm -hmm. foreign foe that can ever, and he says, if we are to fall, we will be the author of our own yeah. destruction. He said, yep. we will either live as free men throughout all time, or we will die by suicide. And you think just a few decades later, he faces exactly what he had foresaw. He faces the possibility of the nation committing suicide, right. of the nation destroying itself. And that was why he had this vision that America couldn't, he, had, he was unshakable in his idea, America cannot go down, that we are the hope of the earth. <clears throat> and there were, you know, there were those at the beginning of the Civil War that said, "Let the South go. Yeah. Yeah. Let you know, d let the let erring the sisters, sisters right. depart. That's Goodbye. Right. Take your slaves and your plantations, mm -hmm. and good riddance." Lincoln would never have that because yeah. he knew it'd be the end of the United States. That cut in two, we would never survive mm -hmm. facing the powers of Europe. Mm -hmm. And he he was unwilling to accept the idea that this nation would would be defeated. And, Remember, and there was the, you uh, see that in this uh, first speech that he gives a novel. Historical novel around 1960, I think it was McKinley Cantor. It, what, oh, it's the South, South and one Civil War. Civil War. Right. Yeah. He was yeah. projecting things that would happen. Yeah. And Texas that breaks away from the South. Everything goes wrong. And then all of a sudden they decide Grant's to throw Russian from his troops in Alaska. You know. Yeah, bro, because we don't buy Alaska. Imagine, imagine if mm -hmm. Seward had not bought Alaska, Seward's remained in Russian yeah. territory. Yeah. Yeah. Seward's folly, Seward's icebox. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah it, uh, it ends with it ends with. There's a scene in there of of in the First World War. The, the United States, the Confederate, and Texas secedes from the Confederacy <laughs> shortly <laughs> after that. They exactly. And it shows this. There's this one illustration of these three doughboys going over the top, all I in identical uniforms, but behind one is the Stars and Stripes, <laughs> behind the other is the Confederate battle flag, and then behind the third is Lone the Lone Star, Star flag of Texas. <laughs> Texas right. And it, it ends in like 1950. That with, late. With I thought the, it ended in war, no, or one of the countries that No, no the, the three countries go to war. That's mm -hmm. And it ends in 1950 with, with uh, the presidents of the United States, the Confederate <laughs> States, and of Texas meeting in Washington, D.C. to agree to the reunification of the United States of America. And the expansion of the, of the NFL. Yeah, right. <laughs> I, uh, what you said uh, about uh, Lincoln giving them that secure feeling and, you know, and then uh, that he foresight. Was, he uh, I can relate to something as a kid listening to uh, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt. Oh, sure. And, uh, of course, I don't know privately what people thought of him, but we would all sit around the radio and listen to his next speech. And, his, uh, and it seemed to always end with, we're the best, and no oh, yeah. one can hurt us. <laughs> oh, and, yeah. you know, and I yeah. can see my brother and I like, hmm. like feeling very comforted. Those fireside and, chats? Know, yeah. 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 You're, 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 you're absolutely right with it, because the, the thing about... Uh, Eisenhower, Dwight Eisenhower, was asked uh, what he thought was, was Roosevelt's greatest quality as commander-in-chief. Without, 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 he, he, said, he said, Roosevelt never for a moment doubted that we would be victorious in the war. He never had the slightest doubt that America, and, he's, and he thought that was the mm -hmm. most fundamental quality. And the interesting thing is, he was the only leader in World War II 
that never considered the possibility that his nation might be defeated. Churchill faced the possibility of England being oh, invaded. Yes, Stalin, Stalin certainly was, was having his breakdown. There were there were a number yeah. of points in which Stalin yeah. was prepared to throw in the towel. Oh, he was sure. he was willing to cut a deal with Hitler if necessary. Yeah, the second one mm -hmm. he did. Yeah. Hitler, yeah, Hitler, yeah, on, Hitler, one, yeah. Hitler killed himself. Hitler understood what it. was happening. Yeah. He was willing to take Germany down, mm -hmm. but he certainly understood that they faced defeat. Roosevelt was the only one. It never, yes. it never crossed and Roosevelt's I, I mind that we could be defeated. Yeah. Connect with that tone and giving you that assurance. That's right. And he yeah. conveyed that. That's the thing. He not only yeah. believed it, but he could oh, convey yes. that. Oh, yes. I mean, adults, children, you know, and we had, you know, uh, the bombs, uh, the, uh, when they, when air raids. Yeah, we air had air 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 yeah, we had the whole oh, sure. gamut of, we knew we were in the war. Mm -hmm. I'm well, a great, um, I just one, 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 one thing about Franklin Roosevelt, you know, the, the speech that he gave on the day after the day of infamy mm -hmm. have, has been compared by historians to Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. Oh, yeah. I, 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 think it, I think it's the great, I think it's a comparable mm -hmm. speech in the 20th century. This day in the fascinating thing about that is you would have expected a president to ask God to grant us victory. I mean, you would think that, that, that a leader on that occasion is going to ask that God may grant us victory in the war. Roosevelt doesn't do that. He may, he said, what is he, he says, he says, he says, um, he says, you know, when he's dealing with the attack, he says, he says, we will gain the inevitable That's triumph, right. so help That's us right. God. He takes an oath before God. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. not a question of whether, yeah, he's on he the says, same level. we yeah. will right. gain the inevitable mm -hmm. triumph, so help us with mm -hmm. confidence That's in right. our armed forces, exactly right. with the unbounding determination <laughs> of our people. We will gain the inevitable triumph. Yes. So help us God. Yeah. I mean that, and that's that's this sense that we cannot be defeated. Yeah. yeah. Just when would it happen? That was the only thing. Yeah. It was yes. Not, yeah. Right. Yes. You know, didn't give any timetable no. like we do today. Uh, no. you know, we're getting out of this country. Mm -hmm. but, you, know, yeah. you know what's a great movie on that is Sunrise at Campobello. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Ralph, you know, yeah. Ralph Bellamy. Ralph yeah. Bellamy. Right. But Greer but Garson. Greg Garson really and uh, right. you know. Uh, uh, I forget. Uh, Pinky Lee. Oh, I went yeah, Pinky. <laughs> yeah, Pinky Lee was vice president. Hugh Cronin. Hugh Cronin. Hugh Cronin. That's what he has. But they, they, McHenry Howe. Yeah, yeah they, right. they, 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 uh, those two. You know, they, they. Uh, I don't know if, if Roosevelt felt he could become president after that, but he, mm, he wasn't going to sit on the sidelines, yeah. and yeah. that's a great. Who all of it? us should use that yeah, every day. You know, get up. It's, 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 it's a new it's sunrise. Really a uh, new it? sunrise. Yeah. Get out and, there and, and believe it. Yeah, and believe, believe it. it. And yeah. I think that movie ends where he's getting up to nominate Al Smith. Al, Al, Al Smith, Smith. right, yeah. right. Yeah. And that's Rios. it from 24 yeah. hours. Yeah, now really he's like a real yeah. political <laughs> convention there in Florida, the way they had that shot. Just, yeah. to, just the signs, yeah. the, you know. By it's the way, who played Al Smith? I can't. I don't remember who the actor was. I not a well known. No, not a well known. No. Yeah. No. The 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 fellow who played Larry Tate in in Bewitched. Yeah. Uh, plays yeah. plays a part of a guy they don't identify, but he represents the clan. He represents Mr. The, Mr. Lassiter. Yeah, yeah, he represents mm -hmm. the. He, he wants yeah. he wants Roosevelt to give some assurance to his members, mm -hmm. because they're very concerned about a Catholic being mm -hmm. nominated for yes, president of the United the States. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And Roosevelt says, you know, if a Catholic is not <laughs> eligible to serve as president, then he should not have been eligible to serve as governor yeah. or senator or mayor or alderman, nor should any Catholic be asked to serve in the defense of our country, or in the, the right army, vote, or yeah, right. navy. Right. So then he looks up and says, is that what your members are looking for? <laughs> <laughs> That's satisfied. And he puts on his hat and out yeah. the yeah. Yeah. See you later. <laughs> No, what was uh, L. Smith sent the one word telegram to the Pope? Unpack. Unpack. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was some vicious stuff written. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, mean, you wanna, always, I wanna give yeah. you my favorite yeah. my favorite Calvin Coolidge speech, and I don't do a, I don't do a Calvin Coolidge <laughs> impression because he didn't say too much and no one knows what he sounded yeah. like. Everybody knows he was silent Cal, right? Because he right. talked so little. So they're having a state dinner at the White House and two reporters, one happened to be a lady, one happened to be a man reporter. They both had a bet running that oh. they could get Coolidge to say more than two words together. <laughs> so this woman followed him around the whole whole evening, prodded him with questions, and he answered everything, yes, no, yes, no. <laughs> Finally, she said, Mr. President, I have to let you know, I have this bet going, and it's for a little bit of money, that I can get you to say two words together, you know, more than more two words together. He right. said, you lose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where was he from, Calvin Coolidge? From Vermont. <laughs> so he could have sounded a little he's, bit he's like Titus Moody, yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That one has a right to strike against the, the public welfare well, any time, yeah. any day, Absolutely. any place. Yeah, yeah. Right. that yeah. was what I mean. He was just he was a, a nondescript, unimportant. Right. But that made him a national. We might need that model. My favorite. What are there was any recordings say? of Coolidge? Yeah, there are. Oh, there's some. Oh, there's sure, there's sure, there's sure, there's yeah, there's some right. famous story about they wanted him to to be have his picture taken with the Chicago Bears. He meets and he says, "He's I, I've always liked animal acts." <laughs> 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 oh, he had watched a couple of games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, my yeah. my favorite Coolidge story is he's standing the pre, he's standing on the on the deck of the presidential yacht. You know? <laughs> And he's got his hand on the railings, and he's looking off in the distance. And a couple of his aides, you know, there's people with him on the boat, says, think of the burdens. Imagine, President of the United <laughs> States, imagine what must be going through his mind, the whole nation, the problems of the world. Just think what he must be pondering over there. So Coolidge stands for a few more minutes, and then he walks back, and he says, you know, been watching that seagull over there. <laughs> that bird hasn't moved for ten minutes. <laughs> now there again, talk about a mismatched couple: Calvin Coolidge and Grace Coolidge. Grace Coolidge, one of the most beautiful first ladies we've ever yeah, had. Right. Very regal, very beautiful woman. Ooh, they had ooh, striking ooh. Grace Coolidge, Calvin Coolidge's wife. Right? I said, woo, 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 woo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, she was very beautiful. And Calvin right. Coolidge, this little dry, freckle-faced, red-haired, stick-in-the-mud, pre you know, president of the United we'll States. Yeah, and um, <laughs> actually, when the, the Coolidge's had two sons, and the one son, I forget which one it was, John or Calvin, died in the White House. Died in the White that's House, right. yeah. He, yeah. Ca he caught blood poisoning yeah, from a blister. Right. There were no antibiotics in Ooh. 1920, yeah. you know, to deal with that's this. Right. And he died in the White House, and Lincoln's ghost, him, the first known re recorded time Lincoln's ghost appeared to anybody was to Grace Coolidge in the yellow mm -hmm. room of the White House, which at the time Lincoln was there was Lincoln with his library. Mm -hmm. And uh, my feeling on that is he appeared to them because he went through the same thing. He lost a son in the White House. Mm -hmm. They lost a son in the White no. House. Yeah. And after his son's death, Calvin Coolidge said he made it. Uh, you know, he made a kind of presidential law. He says, if any young boy ever anybody comes up and says he wants to meet the president, he's to be taken right into me. I don't care what I'm in. You bring him in. I want to meet him. Yeah. I didn't know yeah. Calvin was a redhead, right. freckle face. Yeah, yeah. redhead, yeah. freckle face from, from Vermont. Mm -hmm. Yeah, actually, he was sworn in on, on Warren on Warren G. Harding's death. Of course, Coolidge was the vice president. He was visiting his father's farm in Vermont. He was sworn in in the middle by of the night dad. by his father, who was a notary republic, and they are uh, mm. notary public, not a republic. <laughs> and they uh, put justice actually, of the peace. Or yeah, no, they and they said it wasn't legal actually. So for the first like they questioned, they, they well, weren't yeah. sure if it was. Yeah. There was a feeling that it had to be a federal yeah, yeah. officer to administer the office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. well, and then Coolidge could have, uh, in 1928, 20, Coolidge could have gotten reelected, hands right. down, no problem. But he, no, he saw the Depression coming, and he says, I can't stave this off. I know what's coming. I have no way to do it. He said, I just wish the nation would have been as frugal as I was. Calvin Coolidge, a lot of people don't know this. Calvin Coolidge and Bill Clinton, the only presidents in U.S. history that got the national deficit down to zero. Mm -hmm. Never mm -hmm. happened before. No, was, uh, I'm going to put a, a, a plug in for the redheaded lakes and shift. My <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. uh, I do Thomas Jefferson was a redhead? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. As was Stan Laurel. And it's interesting because <laughs> yeah, right. his real name was Sta Arthur Stanley Jefferson. Arthur, so, right. <laughs> so maybe they oh, were really? related. Yeah. Yeah. Red. And they were both English. I mean, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever hear uh, what they were talking to Grace Coolidge one time about when she first got married and she said, uh, you know, what's your early recollection? She says, Calvin gave me 40 pairs of socks that had to be darned. <laughs> 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 he never threw anything away. No. He did not think highly of Herbert Hoover. You know, it, Hoover... Hoover, Hoover. 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 That's Harry Von Zell, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United <laughs> States, <laughs> Hubert Hoover. Hoover. <laughs> But uh, no, uh, Coolidge. Even though even though Hoover was his Secretary of Commerce, he used to sarcastically refer to him as Wonder Boy, <laughs> the Wonder Boy. He was did not have a high opinion of him. Oh, well, just because they're getting together like they're gonna be friends. But then that with that happy note, Herbert, we are going to have to have another little break here. Time. Well, this time is moving right along, isn't it, folks? Yes. <laughs> 